After a miserable night's sleep, I decided to visit one of the American doctors in town to learn a little bit more about altitude sickness. I had a feeling that something wasn't right with my body. So, Doc, I'm feeling a little funny. Tell me what's wrong with me. Well, from what I can tell, it sounds like you have uh, some altitude sickness. <laughs> Great, lucky me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what are some of the main symptoms I need to look out for? So the most common thing that almost everybody gets is a headache. Uh, and then most people will get poor appetite or nausea. Uh, and then oftentimes fatigue, shortness of breath, feeling like you have a, uh, like the flu. Uh, and then a lot of people will have trouble sleeping also. All of them, I have them all. Good for me. And how many people in this area are having these kind of symptoms? How many trekkers? Uh, in the mild form, probably half of everybody gets uh, some of these symptoms. Uh, in a season, we probably see maybe 10 or so people that get really serious and have to be helicoptered out. So one of the symptoms you said is confused thinking. So if I start thinking a yak is pretty darn attractive, I've got some problems, huh? <laughs> I, I would, uh, I'd say yes to that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this diarrhea is going to be gone soon? Or is diarrhea not even prob part diarrhea, of it? Diarrhea is not part of altitude So there's something illness. else. That's some other so problem. it's a double whammy of yes. that going. Oh, lucky me. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. <laughs> After my little pep talk with the doctor, I was back on the trail. My symptoms didn't actually seem too serious, and it was mostly my stomach that was uncomfortable. So from now on, no more drinking dirty water out of rivers. I've seen lots of other travelers getting sick. It's just, uh... It's just a different world out here, and our wussy American stomachs are not used to uh, the food here. So, hope that'll be better soon. So up until this point, all the signs have led to Menang, but now I'm in Menang, and now the new signs say Thorung La, the dreaded 18,000 foot pass. So, time to head up. Woo! It was tempting to stop and hydrate in these little rivers, but I had learned my lesson. And luckily, I found other ways to get much cleaner water. So check this thing out. It might look like a gun from a sci-fi movie, but really it's a giant solar heater. So the cool thing about this is it condenses all the sun's heat right here. And heats up that pot of water. And that is good because they're not using firewood. And the collection of firewood is what's causing some of the deforestation problems in this area. And another way to get clean water is at these safe water stations which cool. are scattered along the entire trail. They use a sophisticated purifying system and for about 50 cents they fill you right up with diarrhea free water. All right, this is perfect. Mm. Doing this makes me realize how lucky I am. I mean, this is so amazing. I'm walking in a postcard. Everywhere I look is picturesque and beautiful and magnificent. So that song we were singing in the lodge last night is totally stuck in my head. But it's really catchy and it kind of creates a good rhythm. Sometimes uphill, sometimes downhill. So I'm not sure if one of the side effects of altitude sickness is total giddiness. But that's how I feel right now. Everything is so beautiful! Ha ha ha! Oh, so amazing. What a beautiful world we live in, eh? This is just one teeny little part of it. Woo! It takes like five minutes for the echo to come back. Yeah! Lado! Lado! And apparently I wasn't the only one inspired to whoop and holler on this beautiful day. <laughs> So I'm not quite sure what that kid is yelling out. I'm guessing he's either teaching me bad words or insulting me, telling the stupid white man to shut up. But he has a smile on his face, so that's good news. In Colorado, the highest peaks are 14,000 feet. And here I was, surrounded by mountains almost twice that altitude. It's enough to make you feel very, very tiny. So I've come across my first field of yaks. We got all sorts of yaks here. They're pretty much, they look like cows, but they're a little furrier. And uh, since cows are sacred animals in this part of the world, they can't eat them. So you'll see yak burgers on all the menus instead of actual cow meat. So this is a yak. Very beautiful creature, right? It's always so amazing just to be walking along in the middle of nowhere. All of a sudden you come around a corner and boom, 
there's a village. It's like a mirage. A very welcome mirage after a long day. I finally made it to base camp. We're at 4,540 meters, which is about 15,000 and some change feet above sea level. It feels really good to be here finally. While we spend the night here, get a good night's sleep, then heading over Thorung La Pass. Yeehaw! So I'm up here at the Thorung La base camp getting ready to eat dinner. And I wouldn't think there'd be great options here in the middle of nowhere at 16,000 feet, but this menu is packed. You would not believe the stuff they have. They have every hot drink you could ever want. Bread, sandwiches, eggs. This is the good page, check this out. Burgers, they have burgers up here. Macaroni, pasta, chop suey, chow mein, spring roll, pizza. They have pizza up here? Crazy, this is my favorite. They have Mexican food, they have burritos at 16,000 feet in Nepal. Would you ever guess that in a million years they have burritos? Macaroni. Oh yeah, you look at that, you see that? Mm. This is the best day of my life. It's about 5.30 p.m. I just ate my macaroni, got all my calories ready. Uh, there's not a whole lot to do here tonight, so I'm gonna go to bed real early. Um, but it is absolutely beautiful, as you can see. There's almost a full moon over here. The whole glacier here is lit up by the moonlight. But tomorrow is the big day, the day I've been waiting for for a long time. And I'm gonna wake up early in the morning. It's gonna be real cold, I know that. but. Uh, going over 18,000 foot pass. The first time in my life going that high, so I'm pretty excited about it, and I know it's gonna be beautiful when I get up there. Oh, but it's beautiful right now, but I'm just a little chilly, so I'm gonna run back to the room and then hole up for a little bit. <laughs> See you later. All right, so here I am shivering in my bed. It's, it's Thorung La Eve. It's kind of like Christmas Eve, you know, when like you're a kid and you can't sleep because you're so excited because Santa's gonna come and leave you a whole bunch of presents. It's kind of like that, but in this case, you know, I can't sleep because I'm freezing and there's no oxygen in the air and I'm gonna wake up and be even more cold and run over a pass. Oh, I can't wait! <laughs>